Jairo. Jairo Rodriguez, yeah. Okay. So, Jairo, we're out here in uh, Hilton Head Park in El Cajon, California, and we're asking the big question to people. What do you think is going to happen to you after you die? So, you, you die, and then the, the moment after you die, what happens next? You turn into nothing. You turn into nothing? You just die, and that's it. <laughs> you die, and that's it, huh? So, you don't believe that any kind of an afterlife? Zero? No. No? Okay. So, uh, you had any kind of religious background in your life at all? Catholic. Catholic, since you were very yeah. small? Yeah. And when, when did you stop believing in that? Since. <laughs> what do you think changed your, your thoughts on that one? You never really believed it all along? You just kind of went along with it? or? Yeah, what? I just kind of went along with it. And because your parents have told yeah, you good? Yeah, and then just life just shows you that you don't, nobody like comes from the dead or nothing. You just die and that's it. Okay. So you think you're a pretty good person overall, Heidel? I think so, yeah. Okay. Okay, well, most people think they are. I mean, that's the, the average uh, person that we interview thinks that same thing. Just so you're not by any means uh, out of the ordinary in that answer. Okay. Let me ask you a few questions that uh, someone asked us one day, okay? And I'm just going to, they asked us the same thing and they got us thinking. Have you ever told a lie in your life, Heidel? Yes. So have we. <laughs> so we're in the same boat. So what does the world call people that lie? Liars. Liars, right. Ever stolen anything or taken something without permission, even as a kid? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And what does the world call people that uh, uh, take, take things like that? Thieves. Thieves, okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, have you ever uh, hated someone or called them a fool? Yes. Yeah. And we're Christians, just so you know. We yeah. believe in Jesus Christ. The, the Bible says that uh, um, that's murder in your heart because uh, to hate God's creation is, uh, you know, we believe that uh, he, he was the creator of all this and we're supposed to be forgiving. We're supposed to look past it. We all make mistakes, right? Yeah. We all sin, right? We all do things wrong. So based on what you told me, we believe as Christians, and, and I think at one point you maybe really wondered about that yourself, but the Bible says that um, after you die, there's going to be a judgment day. And based on what you just told me, you told me that you are a lying thief and a murderer at heart. If there truly is a judgment day, and this life ends, where do you think you're going to go, heaven or hell? Hell. Hell? <laughs> yeah. Does that concern you at all? No. So, what I'm, if you're wrong? Because I've never met somebody who's been in hell. You never met anybody. I don't know if it's true anyway. Okay. What what makes you think it's not that it's not true? Is there what is it? Just kind of for you? Does things have to just be there, tangible, where you can touch them, and see it, and and understand it, and kind of if Jesus were to show up right in front of you right now and say, "Idol, I'm," you got to believe this, and and show you his Bible and walk you through it and then show you everything, you'd be okay with that. Yeah, then you'd I, believe it. Yeah, I'd believe it. Okay, let, what, I, what we tell people in this kind of an answer is, you see these apartment complex back there? Yeah. Did somebody build that, design that? Yeah. Did you see him do it? Yeah, because I work. <laughs> I work. You, I work, work you build things. Okay, let's I, pick another building. Let's say <laughs> that water tower up there. No. Did somebody build that, design that? I didn't see that. You didn't see him do it. No. But you believe they did that, right? You didn't see him do it, but you believe it, right? Yeah. So is this like this creation around us? Think about your own body for a moment. Your nerves in your body. Your brains, your, your brain, your, your blood, your all those complicated, very, very complicated things you got within your body. Your eyes have to work, everything in that eye has to work together simultaneously at this exact same moment just to be able to see. To think there was a designer or creator to all of that is a bit far-fetched, don't you think? Yeah. So uh, you just, you, you, you believe there's a creator, but you're not sure if it's Jesus Christ, you're not sure it's the God of the Bible? Yeah, I'm not sure. Of... And so, well, I, I, you know, I, I would hope that you would, um, I know you said you're Catholic at one point, something changed you some, somewhere along the line to kind of move away from that. Was it friends maybe, or experiences in your life, or yeah. something where you thought, you know what, if God was 
helping me out through this, I'd believe him in it. Was there any kind of that type of thing? Yeah, some, sometimes, yeah. If, if God was truly God, he would have helped me get through this, right? Is that that's some of the thinking that maybe had gone on in time of your life and that you didn't do it? So yeah. you thought, you know what? He's not even helping me out here. I don't, you know, uh, that's kind of a, if the God was really there, he would be helping me out through this. But I believe that people get in their own, in their own stuff, you know? I mean, people make their own path in life. And if you make mistakes, you have to be responsible for the mistakes you make. So mm -hmm. I'm not the type that like makes a mistake and then has hard times and then asks for God for help. Mm -hmm. Well, all God wants from you is that he wants you to believe in him. He wants to believe that he truly was your creator and the creator of all this. And um, all, he, all he's asking from you is to believe in this, this, this one thing I'm going to tell you is to believe that, you know, one, in order to go to heaven, you got to repent. you got to be willing to walk away from your sin. The lying, the stealing, all that. you got to be willing to say, you know what? It's no good. I know it's no good. I've known all along it's no good. I don't want that lifestyle anymore. Two, you got to believe in Jesus Christ. you got to believe that he, he is God in the flesh who came down to this world and lived a perfect life. He's the only one that's ever lived a perfect life. And then he knew in his plan that you couldn't do it, I couldn't do it, none of us could do it. He said, you know what, I'm going to give him a way to heaven. I'm going to get up on a cross, I'm going to die up on a cross. All they got to believe is I did that for them. they got to ask for forgiveness of their sins for me. they got to believe after I died on the cross from their sins, I rose again after three days and came back alive. They believe those things, they're going to heaven before they die. They don't believe that before they die. The Bible says you're going to go to hell. And hell is described in the Bible as a lake of fire, fire and brimstone, a place you're going to feel pain for eternity. So if I have to weigh pain for eternity and life with God, that, you know, the Bible speaks of what heaven is like, you know, but does it, do I know every little thing about it? No, I don't. But if I'm weighing the two, do I want pain for eternity, especially when I don't know I'm going to die? Could be tomorrow, and I'm gonna live in pain, feeling a burning sensation come over me. For hey, it's a no-brainer for me. And all he's asking us to do is just believe he's your creator and ask for his forgiveness of your sins that we've all done. You knew before you lied that it was wrong, didn't you? Yeah. You knew before you stole anything that it was wrong, didn't you? Yes. He, it, you didn't you, at the time. You may not even believed in God, but you you knew within yourself. God put that in your in your conscience. He put that in there. He built you that way. So, um, and I, I'd, I'd strongly get you to consider that. My wife and I are here, we're, we're sharing the gospel with you guys. And um, we do it with more of an urgent heart these days. We lost an 18-year-old son in a car accident. We lost him suddenly. Didn't get to say goodbye. Nothing. He was a great kid. He was uh, just graduated from Steel Canyon High School. He was an AP calculus student there. He was a cross-country runner that ran 40 miles a week on average since the age of eight. One day, middle of a day, he was driving a car he'd been driving for one week. He was driving an Acura Integra. He was used to a four-cylinder Jeep, much faster car he got into. He was late for a cross-country running class to begin at Mesa College. He was starting right after 12. He jumped in this car, dry day just like this, in his shirt, shorts, and brand new running shoes that he got given from a shoe company the night before free. So he was all excited about running to him for the first time, jumped in the car, and like we've all done at one time in our life, drove a little fast when we had to be somewhere in a hurry. He went about 90, he was on the fat, in the fast lane, and he ended his life right there. I don't know if you've ever seen this house before. Yeah. This is on 94 Road right by in and out Burger. This is his skid marks coming right here. They're dead center in the cross, see them? For the clear picture right here. The color picture of the skid marks, see them? Dead center on the cross. That cross was there many years before my son's accident. Many years before. He came off the freeway going 90 in the middle of the day, hit, the, hit a tree right here, split his car in half, ripped him out of his seat belt, and he landed in the backyard of this house on the on side of a hill looking up at the cross. Parts of his car were on top of the roof around the cross. There's actually Channel 10 news coverage of the... Um, the incident and there's actually the owner of the house is picking up the parts of his car around the cross. <laughs>